Here's the coupler and Acme threaded rod that we're going to attach. The fun part about this step is that you have to carefully position this so that you grip both the motor and the threaded rod. This attaches to the Z motor, so whenever this spins, the extruder goes up and down according to the direction of the rotation. The installation takes two M3 set screws, the Z axis coupler, and the Acme threaded rod. We'll be using Threadlocker Blue again, and if you didn't watch the previous video with Threadlocker, it's very important that you use Threadlocker Blue because it is removable, and someday you may have to take this apart. The last time we had a step with set screws, I made it a point to put them in place before actually installing the piece. Well, it turns out this time it's not so essential, but I'm still going to put them in place just because it's easier for me to keep track of them. They are really tiny and easy to lose. Just get them started if you want to do the same as me, otherwise just keep track of them and you'll put them in place with thread locker when it comes time to finally install them. So again, optional step just to get your coupler prepped with the set screws in case you just want to make it easier on yourself later. Here I've oriented the flat side of the motor shaft so that it's pointing towards me. It's important that the set screws of the coupler line up with the flat side of the motor shaft. The coupler has a wide opening on one end and a narrow opening on the other. The narrow opening is for the motor shaft, while the wide end is for the threaded rod. Go ahead and slide that on top, making sure the set screws line up with the flat side of the motor shaft. It can't sit way at the bottom like you see it here. We actually need to elevate it before we tighten it in place, because otherwise there isn't enough grip for the threaded rod. So all I like to do is take an M3 6mm screw and just stick it right underneath, just to give us a little bit of height. Again, you want to make sure that the set screws line up with the flat side of the motor shaft. Once you've done that, and you've raised it up, you're ready to apply the thread locker. At this point, I'm only ready to apply thread locker to the bottom of the two set screws. However, before I do that, I want to place a note card here underneath to catch any drips from the thread locker. I have the screw sufficiently exposed so that I can apply the thread locker without removing it. However, you may choose to remove it, apply thread locker, and then put it in place. Now we're ready to install the threaded rod in the top half of the coupler. I advise that you try both sides of the threaded rod because sometimes one side slides easier into the coupler. You want to make sure that as you drop it in place, you can feel it drops all the way down and makes contact with the top of the motor shaft. Once you've attached the threaded rod into the coupler, you're ready to apply thread locker to the top set screw. Just like before, I've placed a note card to catch any overflow of the thread locker. I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the set screw. However, you can take the set screw out entirely if you wanted to apply it and then put the set screw in place. Now that I have a little dab of thread locker on there, I can go ahead and tighten it in place. You're really counting on this to crush into the threads of the rod, so make sure you tighten this until it's very firm. At this point, there's no need for that M3 screw anymore. Just pull that out of the way, and double check that your threaded rod is gripped firmly by the set screw. Just give it a little tug, and it shouldn't move at all. So if you know it's firm and everything is finished, you're ready to move on.